Hello, and welcome to Climate Conversations. Climate change is a concern for all of us, not least children and young people. So the question is, are our schools and colleges equipped to inform and help prepare students for the future challenges of climate change? In a minute, we'll be hearing from some people working on the front line of climate education. But first, here in the studio, I'm joined by Nikki Shantz, Southwest Regional Manager for the Climate Ambassador Programme here at the Met Office. Nikki, first thing, what are we doing to help prepare people and future generations? Alex, that is a very good question. So in 2022, the Department for Education launched its Sustainability and Climate Change Strategy, which states that every education setting, so nursery, primary, secondary, and further education, should have a climate action plan in place along with the sustainability lead. That climate action plan takes a whole institution approach, so it covers four pillars. One is the decarbonization of the estates itself. Another one is curriculum, so climate change education, green skills and careers, so how they're going to prepare young people for the challenges ahead. Biodiversity, to improve um, the biodiversity loss that's happening across the country, and in particular on school estates and adaptation and resilience because we know that with climate change we are going to be feeling those impacts for decades to come. That strategy is the Climate Ambassador Program supports that strategy. And where does your role with uh, being a regional manager fit in with the Climate Ambassador Program? So what we do is we recruit climate ambassadors to support those schools to develop those action plans. And what kind of person are we looking at for becoming a climate ambassador? It, climate ambassadors can come from a variety of areas. We don't expect a climate ambassador to be able to cover all four pillars because we know with tackling climate change that it, it requires support from all different areas. It's a complex problem. So we, we require that a climate ambassador will have a specialist knowledge in one of those four areas, and then we can train them to support schools in the other areas as well. That's great. Thank you, Nikki. Now, to find out more about how the Climate Ambassador Program is working in practice, we've spoken to a number of people who are working on the project, starting off with Lou Slocum, who's head teacher of Radstock Primary School. Children in today's society have been impacted by climate change already. If you look at the hot summers we had a few years ago, the rain that rains for weeks on end, that impacts them all the time. Many of the children here at Radstock have family overseas, so they can see the impact of climate change on their families at a more personal level than just what's happening in their own lives. They don't experience much of social media at primary age, but obviously they pick up on how parents are worried and anxious from what they hear and do. So that's why we need to act. I attended a conference uh, earlier this year and heard a young activist uh, tell the audience that 70% uh, of young people feel a sense of hopelessness uh, around the climate emergency. Uh, and that really resonated with me and with the other leaders of our, of our trust uh, that we had to make sure that the climate emergency and our responsibility as, as, as leaders and as, uh, as leaders of education to make sure that every child and every member of staff working in, across our schools uh, accept our responsibility uh, to take the climate emergency really seriously and, and that, that we all have a, an individual and, and a communal responsibility to do everything in our power to address it. Networking was really great at the start. So one of the highlights is connecting with other passionate individuals and professionals in this field. Um, this network has been invaluable for sharing ideas and best practice. And I've been able to learn the aspirations and challenges facing schools. Um, there are climate ambassadors that are based in schools and there are climate ambassadors that work in other sectors and want to support schools. And it's just been amazing to see the variation of people with skills. We have a trust ambition that by 2030, all our schools are at net zero. 
for adaptation and resilience. It's about mending those leaking roofs and making sure that we're prepared for the climate change, the weather that's going to impact us. How can we diversify the biodiversity with, on, on each of the school sites? And then around climate education, it's about, um, you know, building a curriculum so the children at, in the trust from nursery through to key stage five have opportunities built year on year to develop their understanding and knowledge not only about climate change but how to change it. Head teacher of Radstock Primary School Lou Slocum there. There are a lot of challenges with putting this into practice but also some really great work already being carried out. Nikki, what kind of responses have you already seen? We're only a few months into this project. Are people feeling optimistic? I think so, yes. Um, the replies and the responses I've had have all been very positive from CEOs and CFOs of the multi-academy trust, from head teachers and, and teachers alike in schools, as well as people within county councils who are supporting them. A lot of the challenges that we face, though, um, in schools specifically, is a lack of knowledge and skills and a lack of time and resource, which are huge. And this is where the Climate Ambassador Program can really come in to support schools because we can offer that support to them. And why is it so important that kids do this and take it away? The impacts of climate change are going to be felt for decades and students need to be prepared to, to go out and to be able to tackle these problems. But also they need to be able to build up the skills so it's not even just about the, the knowledge and the content, but it's developing those skills that they're going to need to go out into the, work, into the workforce and be members of society in, in jobs and employment that may not even exist yet. And it's only going to be by developing those skills and resilience that they'll be able to do that. If people were hoping to get involved with the Climate Ambassador Programme, how would they find out more? We have a wealth of online information from how to sign up and become a climate ambassador to what kind of training is available and what kind of resources we could provide to help with um, implementing and developing those climate action plans. Nikki, thank you so much for joining me today and thanks also to everyone who's taken the time to speak on this edition of Climate Conversations. Thank you also for watching. We will be back again next month. See you soon.